Welcome to this episode of Ask an Engineer. The title of this is coding, which is fun because I'm pretty sure I've told the design team that I do not like to code. I am not very good at it. Both of my brothers code and that's what they do. And so we'll see, we'll see. Maybe that'll be good because my perspective as an electrical engineer that doesn't code that well, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so let's see what these questions are. First question, what programming languages do electrical engineers use the most? Oh man, I hate these questions that are, it depends. Because it really does depend. I mean, are you going to be doing a lot of simulations using MATLAB? Well, they have a proprietary uh, language that they use that's very similar. Yeah, are you gonna be an embedded systems guy? Okay, great. Are you the small 8-bit microcontrollers that use assembly? Or are, they, are you gonna do something a little bit more complicated with C? Or are you gonna be even more complicated where you're gonna be using stuff like C++ and Java? Or are you gonna be doing a lot of tests where you are uh, automating tests and so you use the LabVIEW language to automate the tests or you are automating things with Python? It just depends. That being said, two basic good ones to know, which is funny because I only know one of these, is C and Python. Python's very flexible and it's actually been a, we're, we just did a lesson where uh, JSL used Python in the example, and I'm like, oh crud, I don't know Python. I'm gonna have to learn how to use this so that I can do the example. So it, it's, it's useful, I just, I need to repent and be better about that and learn it myself. But then I also recommend C. C is a good basic language. It's used in a lot of embedded systems. You may not actually have a whole lot of practical use of it, but at the same time, it's a pretty basic language where you can learn the structure of it and, it will help you to learn other languages as necessary. So that would be my recommendation, even though specifics are gonna change it incredibly, Python and C. Okay, moving on. What's your favorite programming language? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, I'd say C, it's simple. I use it a lot. I don't do that complicated of stuff with embedded systems. I usually don't do anything that would require anything more complicated than C. Whereas assembly, yes, I've done it. Yes, I'm familiar with it. That's a little bit too low level for me. I like C, it's kind of the sweet spot for me. So my favorite programming language is C. Okay, I feel like my teenage daughter when I do that. Wait, she just does the one side, it's very weird. Is learning assembly useful? Uh, it depends on what you're doing. If you are doing low level coding where you have very tight timing tolerances or you need some serious efficiency spaces or you want exact control over what you're doing in your microcontroller, then absolutely. Even if you're not doing that a whole lot, sometimes it's good to call uh, subroutines that are in assembly so you can have something that's a little bit looser. I love that vague term. But then you're like, okay, this needs to be exact. And then you just drop in an assembly subroutine and then it'll do exactly what it needs to for that point before jumping out and then uses uh, C code for the rest of it. So I, I would say if you're doing microcontroller work or plan on doing microcontroller work in your line of business, absolutely. If you're dealing with power grids and are never gonna touch a microcontroller, then absolutely not, don't waste your time. Except for you probably need to take that class in college, sorry. Okay, next question. How well does programming something like an Arduino prepare me for real world applications as an electrical engineer? Well, that's a good question. I mean, Arduino is very simplified, but I like Arduino because it empowers you. I mean, you're just like, holy cow, that was so fast, that was so easy. For people that didn't start with Arduino, for people that have only done Arduino, maybe that's not the case. But I remember just trying to get things to work in my first UART communications using a PIC16 F690. And it was like 11.30 at night and I finally worked and I'm just so excited and so happy because I'd spent a ridiculous amount of time before realizing that I'd flipped a bit on one of my settings and it was messing everything up. Whereas with an Arduino, I mean, it literally, it takes me longer to get everything hooked up onto the computer and open it up and then I'm just like, oh, hey, you are. And then it'll just pop up and show up on my computer like within seconds. So it's really nice in that it helps us feel like we've attained something, gives us that sense of accomplishment and gives us that desire to do more. So I really like Arduino. So now to this question, is it useful? And does it prepare you for real world applications? I'd say it does. Like it has you going down that mindset of, okay, I need to think through this clearly. I need to 
uh, architect this before I move on. I need to approach this with the end goal in mind and break this in different pieces. But then those individual pieces are much, much easier than in the real world. So does it adequately prepare you for the frustrations of working with some of the more advanced and difficult microcontrollers? No, but is that a bad thing? I don't know, we're all adults. I, I don't think there's an issue with that. Um, so yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have any problems with it. I, I think it does help prepare in a lot of ways, even though it does, it's like training wheels on a bike. Yeah, maybe it's not great, but it can help you. And if it makes riding a bike more fun than just having terrible memories of your dad screaming at you to get back on and to forget the bleeding and get going, and then you just never want to ride your bike even once you do it successfully because you're like, it was so miserable. I never, ever want to do it again. But you're like, oh yeah, those were sweet summer days and I just, I love riding my bike. Yeah, then it's great. So I'm, I'm not going to judge anybody. And uh, I would encourage anybody to use Arduino if it would get them through that barrier and help them become an engineer. Next question. Which software tools do you find most effective in the simulation and analysis of electrical engineering designs? <sighs> okay, again, another depends question. Do I find most effective? That's, a, that's an interesting challenge. So I don't do a whole lot of system stuff. I feel like LT Spice is a very good free simulator at the circuit level. Things like that, that's good. MATLAB and Scilab are good for the systems level things that you're doing. Uh, again, Scilab is a much cheaper than MATLAB, not quite as uh, well polished, I would say. That's a difficult thing. I mean, we even were working on some, some thermal design stuff and I remember using ANSYS as a undergraduate. And I really struggled with that, but if I was doing more thermal design stuff, that would have been absolutely critical. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I think that's just going to be dependent on what you're, what you're doing. And then once you know what you're doing, then you can ask a more specific question of, in thermal, in electronics thermal management, what is the best simulator? then you can get actual actionable things. As it is, that one, it's just a little bit too vague to really get a good answer on. So with that, moving on. How do you approach debugging when dealing with both hardware and software components in electrical engineering projects? Hmm, after the crying and the praying? That's a good question. I basically like to try and find the source. I think that's fairly generic. Like, okay, what's going on here? Where is it breaking? And I'll typically do that by either eliminating different parts of the project and seeing where it fails or changing one bit and seeing where, like, okay, if I change this, do I get a different response? And sometimes it's, yes, I get a different response. And then I look at it and think, is that actually changing the response in a way that I think it is? Or is that just bad? But then if it doesn't change anything at all, I'm like, okay, well, then I don't think it's that. Frankly, I would say I'm not great at debugging. It's a real struggle. Hardware, I was doing one project, it was a class D amplifier, and those are kind of this feedback loop. And the end project was my uh, capacitors were too small uh, at one part of the circuit. But since everything was dependent on the previous part, and it just kind of looped and looped and looped, Oh, that was a nightmare to debug because I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what it was, what's causing the problem because everything was dependent on something else. But when you don't have that loop, it's just best to just try and eliminate those things that you can, figure it out. Uh, there's also a lot of benefit of talking to other people that may have had the same issue. There's absolutely no shame in learning from other people's mistakes. But if you don't have that capability, then just jump in and change what you can and try and guess. Not necessarily guess. It goes back. I feel like I, I'm a broken record when I talk about this, but having an intuitive understanding of what's going on would really, really help. If you're looking at it and you can say, oh, that's drooping right there. Why would that droop? Well, I know that that should be looking like this because I know that it's being stored in this capacitor. So if it's drooping, that must mean 
that there's not enough capacitance to hold that charge while it's being discharged. It's drooping the voltage. I'm going back to that class D amplifier, what I wish I could have told myself years ago. It's like, just look at that. That drooping means that something's going on, but I didn't have an intuitive feel. And so I couldn't find it. So that's why I really, really harp on that. The math is super important, but having an intuitive feel is almost more important. And in many times, I would say is more important than the math. So that's how I deal with hardware, software. I just rely on the thing saying, you have an error on this line. And then I look in that area and try and figure out what is screwed up. And it really frustrates me when it's like, you screwed up on line 152. And it's actually on line 123, but it takes, takes a while for the compiler and the, everything to go back. Anyway, definitely even worse at debugging software. Mm, that's a rough one. Okay, so I think, is this the final question? Nice, the final question about coding. What's the coolest thing you've coded? <laughs> okay, the coolest thing I've coded was, in retrospect, pretty lame. Have I talked about this? I might have talked about this. If I've talked about this before, I apologize. But in the Navy, so I was fresh out of college. I was a junior ensign in the CBs. And I think this is a CB specific thing. But if you are the junior ensign, then you are uh, the boot ensign. And if you're the senior ensign, you're the bull ensign. And so I actually gained, went in and for a very short time, I was the boot ensign. And then I was kind of the bull ensign and then I was kind of both. Anyway, that's not important. The boot ensign, what they do is they carry around a boot, like, you know, a military, an army, in our case, Navy boot filled with concrete and a handle. And you had to polish it and you had to take the boot with you everywhere. And then all of the more senior officers would try and steal the boot. And then you, they'd make you do ridiculous things to get it back. That was the idea behind it, was this boot polished to perfection filled with concrete, like a rebar handle pulled out of it that you carry around to all of the functions. And it's just a way for them to not haze you, very specifically not hazing, but to welcome you into the community. So even though I wasn't the boot ensign, I, I've never been a practical jokester kind of guy. I've always hated that sort of stuff. And I thought it would be super cool to make a boot alarm. So what I did was I asked a friend, he donated a boot, and I carved out the bottom and put a little box in there and I had some electronics. So with a wireless fob, I had it so I could arm and disarm this boot that had all the com electronic components in it and a speaker. And when I put on the alarm, it basically started looking for movement. So if it was armed and somebody picked it up, it would detect the movement and it would start to alarm. And like whoop, whoop, whoop. And then you'd, turn it off. And then I tried and I, it wasn't great, but I tried to make it so it chirped on and off like a car alarm. So when I clicked it, it went droop, droop, and then I clicked it droop, droop, to make it so it wasn't. And that was pretty cool. I mean, honestly, I don't imagine it worked much long for very long after I left the area. And it took me long enough to do it that I left fairly soon after I uh, finished it. But that was kind of my gift to the incoming ensigns was a rechargeable boot alarm that if they put it down somewhere, they could arm it. So if those senior officers came and snagged it, it would scream at them so that they could go and get it before it disappeared to Timbuktu for a couple of months, which is what happened to my bullhorns um, once. And it was several months. Anyway, so I know that's pretty lame. But for me, that was the coolest thing I've ever coded was that that was when I talked earlier about the UART communications, I was working on that project when I got it to work. Um, and that was very exciting to me. And uh, yeah, hopefully that was a lot cooler. Isn't aren't things usually cooler in your head than they're said out loud. So that's probably not the case. Yeah, sorry about that. So hopefully you've done something much, much cooler. If you have done a cooler project, which again, that's a very low bar to pass, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear. I, I love to hear the cool projects. I love to hear the cool things that people are doing because they are very exciting. As it is, that's all the questions that we have on coding today. I hope you enjoyed the answers. I hope that they were entertaining and maybe a little bit thought provoking. Maybe, probably not. That's fine. If you did like the video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel. We will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.
Hey, we hope you enjoyed this video. Did you know that circabread.com does more than just tutorials? Besides tools, textbooks, and other things, we host an ever-growing library of math and electronics-related equations and glossary terms. Don't have the entire table of integrals or Faraday's second law memorized? We gotcha. Go check them all out.